Larry Brown, if Mr. Hughes and Anthony got back together, it might seem too much like work. We're doing that again? Wait, guys, are we doing that again? Every day with this shit. But we uh, we survived the ice, so now I gotta go and um, go and uh, get some uh, some salt to throw down on the ice, so no more broken bones for me or my wife or the family. You know, you hear? Give it up, Larry. Yeah, give it up, Larry Brown. Give it up. This is what we do now. We have a nice crew. Most of the people, uh, uh, I don't know. I think they've uh, moved on with me, the ones watching this anyway. And uh, I like that. Yeah, more snow on the way, huh? Every single day, Rachel says. Rachel, welcome to my life. It never, it fucking never ends. It just means that uh, I guess we we came up with a very, very special show back in the day, but it never fucking ends. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit. I'm trying to figure out who the real Anthony is, to be completely honest with you. I, I, I honestly don't know, and I sat across from him for uh, 20 years. I don't know. I think, I think the current version of Anthony is – is uh, the the true self Anthony, and uh, for for whatever reason he uh, became more and more confident to let his actual true self come out, which is very different than the guy I met all those years ago and did uh, a lot of damn good radio with. And the switch happened as we were still doing the Opie and Anthony show. If people really are focused and paying attention, the switch happened as we were doing the show. The last few years he was switching over to. Uh, his true self, which is, uh, I, you know, I'll be honest, a person I don't want to hang out with. I'll say that much. He has he has an audience. He has a lot of people that uh, support him and believe just like he believes in a lot of the topics of the day. But uh, I sit around sometimes wondering who the real Anthony is. And I think uh, I think the version I got for the for uh, the majority of the 20 years I was with him was. I don't know, not not completely his uh, his true self, and then he let it out. He turned the Opie and Anthony show very very political, very political, very right wing, and uh, that was very different than the show that uh, I wanted to do and developed with him. And then when he moved on, he went uh, he went all in with his views. My God. And I, I believe that's why it makes it impossible for any type of Opie and Anthony reunion, man. That's that's not the type of radio I want to do. I want to be silly. I want to be a goofball. I want to be stupid. I want to do dumb voices if I want to. I want to <laughs> yell Snowy if I feel like it or Brother Man, Brother Man. And keep it light and fun and, um, you know, hopefully entertaining and hopefully funny at times. So I hope that answers the question today. Oh, my God. Every day. Uh, less politics, more bra bombings. There you go, Gary Krasinski. Thanks for reminding me of one of the worst bits we ever did. All right. Um, the wiffle ball bat. That's that's uh, I don't know where the wiffle ball bat is at this at this time. And although I don't like the guy at all these days, um, Jim Norton pretty much uh, saved the Opie and Anthony show when we first got back. We had to sit out two and a half years for the Sex for Sam stunt. We started on uh, Sirius XM. Uh, no, only XM at the time. Sorry. Uh, and uh, and we just decided to pick up where we left off. You know, we had a Jägermeister machine with chilled Jägermeister and... We did this uh, bit with the wiffle ball bat. I, I don't even know if, uh, oh, my God, Rachel, do you know about the wiffle ball bat? I reference Rachel because she's a newer, uh, I hate the word fan, because uh, I don't know. It's 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 more of a relationship than than uh, just being fans at this point, because we've uh, spent a lot of mornings together as the sun's going up. But Rachel's uh, basically new, a newer one. But well, we would uh, take this wiffle ball bat and we would uh, put it in places uh, and women would uh, compete. They uh, signed up uh, 
Uh, willingly, <laughs> Rachel goes, nope, I'm scared to ask. I want more people like Rachel, people that uh, either don't give a shit about the Opie and Anthony years, or they do, but they also like what I'm doing now. Rachel's one of those people. Um, so the girls would willingly uh, do things with the whipple ball bat, you know? And uh, this is weird because on the latest episode of the podcast, I actually defend my stance on being a feminist because I got beat up for saying I'm actually a feminist. Go listen to the latest episode. I talked to uh, Billy DeTore, who was uh, Brother Weez's um, <clears throat> Brother Weez's uh, producer for many, many years. Uh, and at the end of that episode, I tried to defend the fact that I said I was a feminist on uh, YouTube. People got really disgusted when I said that. But the reality is when we did all these crazy bits on the Opie and Anthony show, the, the women uh, were willing to do all this. And if you think women are equal to men, why not let them do crazy shit on the radio as well? Sure, it involved being very, very sexy uh, a majority of the time, but they wanted to do that. So the wiffle ball bat challenge was legendary, and we had it in a glass case, and the bat was marked and signed by the participants, and everyone knew what the record was. And women would try to beat the record, and it got to a point where, uh, let's just put it this way, the bat couldn't go any further. So the women that really wanted the record, they were... Uh, they they were putting their health at risk. So uh, that wiffle ball bat was in the glass case, and every once in a while, a woman would come in and she go, she would say something like, "I want to take the challenge," and we would have a whole ceremony of taking the bat out of the glass case. <laughs> oh my God, preparing the fucking bat, and uh, anyway. So we get fired for the sex for Sam. We sit out two and a half years. Our our uh, our careers and, and kind of part of our lives were completely ruined. And we got the chance to come back. And we were very, very successful with the comeback. But very, very early on, we had our own studios uh, on 57th Street. Uh, XM built an incredible facility for us. And we said, you know what? Uh, let, let's just go back to doing our show. And by the end of our run... At NEW and in syndication, when we got knocked out with the Sex for Sam, we were fucking out of our minds taking chances. And the bosses were trying to calm us down. And and uh, I honestly felt like we didn't need to do as much of that stuff anymore. But I also felt the pressure of the audience because we really became known for really pushing the uh, the limits and pushing that line. And uh, the listener would pretty much call up every day, basically saying stuff like, all right, what are we going to do next? Because we were we were just completely out of uh, control and had no bosses, by the way, which is which is a great story for another day. They had bosses that ran too many radio stations. So the guys that were in charge of us is the short answer. They only uh, they were only on site at the station like one, two days a week. That's it. The rest of the time you had these. Two shock jocks that didn't give a fuck making stupid money, just making up the rules as they go along, and, and we didn't have to report to anyone. Tom Chiasano, don't worry, I wrap all this up. I've been doing this a while. I'll get back to why Jim Norton saved the show in a second. Tom Chiasano, uh, who was Howard Stern's general manager, uh, he worked for the competition even though we were the same company. He knew how fucking talented we were. And he also knew that uh, no one was really watching us and telling us that we can't do shit. And he famously called the radio show one day. It wasn't in, in his best interest to save our ass, but uh, he, he's, he was that type of guy. I remember him calling up the show, basically saying, what the hell are you guys doing? And basically saying, you're going to get fired. You can't be doing this on the radio. So it was a general manager from another radio station that was trying to keep tabs on um, me and Anthony. And then fast forward a, a, um, a few years, we end up working for Tom Chiasano a little bit. A little bit. When we went back to regular radio after uh, Howard went to satellite, we were already on satellite. They brought in David Lee Roth. He failed miserably. And then the company that fired us and tried to crush our, our careers for two and a half years decided to rehire us. And our boss was Tom Chiasano. There you go. Um. 
Rachel says, I figured that's what that was about. Uh, they're immune to COVID if they took that bat challenge. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. So anyway, we get back on uh, radio. And the, the first week or two of the new show, we almost uh, got fired again. We had a Jägermeister machine with chilled Jägermeister. And everyone was getting really effed up. And women were coming in. And they were getting naked. And... They didn't know where the hell they were. And uh, one girl uh, was uh, trying to beat the record of the wiffle ball bat challenge. And at this point, that bat had a lot of markings on it. A lot of women uh, took the challenge. And the more women that take the challenge, you realize that the record's going to be harder and harder to beat. And uh, this woman's like, screw that. I want to be a hero today. And uh, she came close to really hurting herself. And then it didn't help that another girl was was uh, completely naked on the sidewalk as regular Joes were coming into the building to the other offices to go to work. And maybe the police were called and maybe Ralphie May helped out on the sidewalk. And maybe we were uh, getting other naked drunk girls out of the out of the facility through uh, through uh uh, the the uh, uh, loading dock in the back as the cops are more in front investigating, and then they recognized uh, Ralphie May, and they they were a little starstruck, and they're taking pictures with Ralphie May. Maybe some of this stuff happened, and then of course Ralphie May announced for years to come that he actually saved the Opie and Anthony show. So then I go to the diner with Jim Norton. We were. Uh, pretty pretty friendly back then and uh we're ordering and i'm sitting there like wow what a start to our comeback and jimmy i forgot who else was at the table anthony wasn't anthony never really uh hung out after the show ever very very rarely uh extremely rare actually which is one of my issues but whatever um but jimmy's like what the fuck are we doing He's, he's like getting really mad. He's like, dude, we just shut out two and a half years. What the fuck are we doing? We're going to get fired. This was like a weekend, something like that. Maybe two weeks in tops. What are we doing? We're so fucking stupid. We're going to get fired. That was crazy what happened today. Although, you know, it was amazing radio. I'm sure you could even find the that particular show somewhere. And uh, I uh, I listened to Jimmy that day. And uh, we pretty much got rid of the Jägermeister machine immediately, or we put it back in the office and it was uh, it was downplayed. I don't remember if it actually left the facility, but it certainly wasn't front and center from that day forward. And uh, and we retired the wiffle ball bat. And Bill Marchant just says, "Fuck Ralphie. Why he's dead? He can't hurt you anymore, Bill. He's dead." So that's the story of Jimmy um, pretty much saving the show early on in our comeback. Did the bat go in one of those cases like you display an autographed baseball, Chris Halema? Yes, it actually was a, a professional glass case, I think, for bats, like bats that you, you would see in Cooperstown. <laughs> yes, the, the glass case was very, very special. <laughs> 